Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 136 Qt tutorials with C++ and GUI programming. We're going to continue our high-speed performance TCP server. Actually, it's an HTTP server now. Um, so this will be part five. Uh, I'm mentioning that in case you're just tuning in. There are four previous parts to this, and there's 130 some odd videos out of my channel specific to C++ and Qt. Uh, did have some good feedback. I do try to look at the feedback, but I don't get out there very often. And uh, this fine young lad, Cullen, reminds me of what I was talking about was the field programmable gate array. Oh my gosh, why didn't I remember that? And of course, as soon as I stopped recording, I actually remembered it. But, you know, every time I turn this computer on, I swear I smell burning cat hair. I don't know what the deal. Maybe there's some cat hair got sucked up in there. <laughs> Anyways, um, also this gentleman says... To add a definition, it's Alt, Enter, Enter. And then I get to go back, you go Alt, Left. So we may try that. No promises on how that's going to work out. Whew. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to continue. But if you remember where we left off is we have a shell of a web server. I say a shell because it will send the, the actual header. Yeah, right here. It'll send a, a header of either you know 200 OK, or it'll send 404 not found. But we're not actually sending the file, and we've got a lot of these to do. Make a rate controller. Make a rate controller. I mean, they're all over the place in this thing. So that's actually what we're going to do today: is actually make a rate controller. So, what is a rate controller, and why does it smell like burnt cat hair in here? Seriously, what is that? Anyways, <laughs> if you uh. If you do a speed test, I'm sure some of you have some just blistering internet speed. Some of you have something like this, where it says 5 point something megs per second. Some people have more, some people have less, depending on where you live and you know all that stuff. Some people have fast, some people have slow. My, my point is, just because you have, let's say, a 5.6 megabit connection to the internet, you're not going to download files at that speed. There's various things that come into play. First off, your ISP, let's say you're using, I don't know, Comcast. They're going to throttle your connection. They say they don't. Every ISP says they don't, but every ISP does it. They have to, because if they serve everybody as fast as they can all the time, they're just going to simply run out of bandwidth. So imagine, and I actually kind of got these backwards here. Just think of traffic. This is a lot Sim a lot similar. This is very similar to a network. You see all these little cars. Well, all these little cars are packets. Every single one of these things is packets, and it's just all backed up. That's called network congestion or lag or latency. So what you have to do is you have to throttle that, similar to a, a traffic light, where you stop, go, stop, go. You you know got to control traffic because if you don't, it just becomes this big traffic jam nightmare. And you know. Some places are better than others, but uh, wow, that's actually a map of traffic congestion. That whole area sucks. I've been there. <laughs> anyway, so a rate controller actually slows us down, and it does it intentionally. So like this little meme here of uh, speed limit 70 goes 30. That's what we're going to do. We're going to slow things down. We're doing this because as a server, remember we're writing a server, if you were to send the file as fast as the server could do it, you're just going to flood your connection. And you're effectively going to block all the other clients trying to download. So that kind of defeats the whole point of having a high performance server. Now I know that you may be sitting here going, well, what's the point of a rate transfer if you're trying to make high performance? I want this thing to go as fast as possible. That's great. And you can make it go as fast as possible, but in doing so, you're only going to be handling one download at a time because you're just going to completely flood that network connection. All right, so we've got a simple rate transfer class, and the goal of this, the goal of this specific tutorial, is we're going to flesh this thing out, and we're going to be able to choose a source QIO device and a destination QIO device, and then send those send the data from file A to file B at a specific rate. So, first thing we're going to do, include QIO device. Now, why are we doing QIO device? Because a socket, a Q socket, and a Q file both inherit QIO device. So it just makes sense. Uh, because we don't want to write two classes, we don't want to say 
uh, sources a socket, destinations a file, and then, oh, well, I want to flip those around, so i got to write a whole new class. You just don't want to do that. We're going to use a queue timer. Whoops. My throat's a little, little raw, so if I clear my throat a few times, I'm sorry. I'm trying really hard not to. It is just very hot and humid here. I don't know why. It's just kind of weird. So let's flush this out here. And I'm going to try not to make this an hour long video. I've been babbling for like three and a half hours about this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to have rate, we're going to have int size. Whoops. So the rate is the specific rate we're going to send. The size is the packet size or the buffer size. So for example, you can have a rate of say a megabyte per second, but you want to do it in chunks of say 10K per chunk. Makes sense? If not, it will. The maximum is just something I threw in there. Um, it's like the maximum number of bytes. So you can say I don't want to send the whole file, I just want to send like part of the file. Probably help if I did that. Cannot type. I, uh, I had a long weekend. It was my birthday, so I uh, pretty much did nothing but eat cake and play video games. And today I went back to work, and uh, yeah, and then I went to the gym. So it was a double shot of not awesome. All right, so as you can see, we've got a rate size, maximum, source, and destination. And we want to just add in is transferring just because. And we're going to do a queue string, pair string. That way, if something goes wrong, we know. Let me scroll down here. Whoopsie. Darn it. There we go. We're going to make our private or our protected variables here. Just looking at something. I wondered if I screwed something up, but I don't think I did. We're just going to keep plowing through here. why it's not picking that up right there it goes for some reason it wasn't auto indenting I'm not sure what the deal there was maybe I misspelled it just didn't figure it out sometimes I'm just a little brain dead when I'm like tired and going to the gym and all that just kind of wears you down So tra m transferred is the number of bytes that we've currently transferred, um, just because the rest of these are pretty self-explanatory, but that one probably wasn't. I'm going to, you know, the beauty of copy and paste, I hate typing. They need to make a computer that can like read your thoughts, because I just, I hate typing. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because I do it all day long. That's why I hate doing it. Cute trimmer. <laughs> that was nice. Cute trimmer. I'm going to make a 
timer. Whoops. All right, so what we've got here is we've got our protected variables for the most part. Um, we've got rate size transferring, uh, maximum transferred, source destination, the timer, and error for the error string, and whether or not we're currently scheduled. And then, gosh, you know, there's that smell of burnt kit here again. I'm really wondering, maybe I should just crack open my computer and get it over with, because, man, that was strong that time. Maybe it's my power supply starting to go, which I'll be really not happy. So we're going to set the defaults, check the devices, because um, you need to check to make sure the source and destination are actually ready. And then check transfer because we're going to check to see if we can actually transfer and it would probably be super awesome cool if I actually spelled that right transfer there we go then we're going to schedule the transfer um, the premise of this is when this thing's going we're going to be sending several dozen hundreds thousands of packets per second depending on how big we set the size and once we hit a certain bytes per second the rate we're gonna stop and then we're going to schedule the transfer and the transfer will resume using a timer uh, what's it called a single shot I had to think about that I was like man what's that called Don't you hate it when you just you know something is right on the tip of your tongue? It's been happening to me more and more lately. I, everybody kind of jokes because it was my birthday that it's you know getting older. I think it's just stress and being tired and switching jobs. And my daughter got married and it's been kind of a crazy summer. Oh, and I went to Europe for two and a half weeks and you know they say that that jet lag you get over that in a few days, but I've I've been back a month and a half and I'm still still feeling jet lagged. Maybe need to go back to Europe for two and a half weeks. <laughs> that would be nice, right? Okay, we're almost done fleshing out the header here. So we got our public slots. We're going to do a start, stop, and then we're going to do protected slots. Now remember, protected is only for this class and classes that inherit this class. So these won't be public. Read, read. No, we want ready, read. Sorry. And void bytes written. Qint64 bytes. All right. I always like that word, bite. Bite me. Anyways. Whew. All right, so looking at this header, you can kind of see what's going on here. Where we've got some getters and setters. Um, then we've got some internal where we're going to set the default, check the devices, schedule a transfer. Um, some signals we're going to pump out. Some slots like start, stop. And we're going to actually do the transfer, um, You know whether or not we've got ready, read whether or not we've got bytes written. All right, so let's see if that gentleman was correct. What was it? Was it alt enter? Hey, look at that. Alt enter and enter again. And then what was it? Alt left. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's almost like it was meant to be. Oh, we're gonna have some fun with this. Of course, now I forgot where I was and I need to go back. Damn you, maximum and set maximum, all right. All right, so. Oh my gosh, that's so much nicer. This is gonna be so much faster than clicking around. And I guarantee you by the next tutorial, I'll completely forget how to do this. And I'll be like, I don't remember what that was. And he's gonna be like, dude, seriously. 
All right, so if anybody was wondering, you just you mouse over it, you press Alt and Enter. Well, of course, now it's not going to do it. Let's go down to one I haven't done yet. Alt and Enter, and it brings up that little dialog. And then you press Enter again, pop, and it brings it up, actually creates it. You press Alt and left arrow to go back. Pretty slick. See, that's why I love you guys. I have a question, I ask you answer, and you don't call me stupid most of the time. Although I do get some fan mail once in a while that I just want to like find where the person lives and just destroy them. Usually my definition is if or my definition, my response is if you think you can do better, why don't you make some videos and post them? And of course they never do, but whatever. I'm not saying that I'm better than them, I'm just saying a lot of people are very quick to judge but very slow to actually do anything about it. Alright. We got this bad boy. First thing we want to do is, you guessed it, set defaults. Whoops. And then we got our maximum, so we're going to return. Yeah, let's do it after. Maximum set to, and you know what? We're just going to do this. Why not? Remember, we want a lot of debug statements just because we really want to see what's going on in memory. And we can always filter these out later. Notice I'm using QDebugs instead of QWarning or QCritical. All right, so ah, magic of copy and paste again. Hmm, where's my other ones? I had some beautiful ones here. Did I miss size? I totally missed size, didn't I? I did. See, old habits die hard. I'm already right clicking. Did I miss rate too? I did miss rate. Man, see. I was so enamored by the newfangled way of doing things, I completely just blanked out there. Whoops. Now remember, the rate is the bytes per second that we're going to send, and the size is the size of the buffer that we're going to send each and every time. The maximum would be the maximum number of bytes in total that we want to send, which I don't really remember if I implemented that fully or not, but we will find out. So I'm dying to ask you guys, what's good on Netflix? I've been kind of watching some shows, and I'm kind of getting burned out on a couple of them. But I was wondering, you know, what what are you guys watching? Because we're all kind of into like the nerd stuff. Wow, I totally just messed that up. M destination. I want source set to, there we go, destination set to, I should probably fix some of these little errors real quick here, whoops, that would have been like not, that would have been the opposite of awesome. 
Okay, let me look at my notes, make sure we got everything here. Oh, yeah, 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 we're missing some stuff here. Set source, okay. So if the source is sequential, then we want to connect a signal and slot. Now, what is sequ sequential? Um, sequential would be anything that just goes one after another, like a socket. There's no way to go backwards in time on the data on a socket. So a, like a Q file would be random access, meaning you can jump to the beginning or the end or anywhere in between, where like a socket is sequential. You can only go forward in time. So because of that, there's a bit of confusion with like Q file and Q socket or I'm sorry, QTCP socket, because some of the signals and slots don't work depending on which Q device you're working with. So yeah, it gets kind of crazy. So we're going to connect the source. And we're going to go QIO device, ready read. Do this, rate transfer, ready read. Wow, in my notes I actually have it wrong. Hmm. Well, horse pucky. <laughs> okay. So basically, what we're doing is we're saying if the source is sequential, in other words, if it's like a socket, not a file, because it could be either or, then we're going to connect that signal slot. And I'm pretty sure we want to do the same. Let me check my notes on the destination here. Yep, bytes written. That's what it was. I'm like blanking out here and I'm like, Ugh. So if the destination's sequential, like if we're sending to a socket, then we want to connect the bytes written to the bytes written. Now, why are we doing this? Well, the source, we want to read the ready read, and when that is emitted, I don't, we don't want to read the ready read, we want to connect to the ready read so that when that is emitted, we know that there's data in the socket and then we can read from it and we can transfer. The destination, however, if that's sequential, we want to wait until the bytes have been written to the socket and then we will pull out and say, all right, send more if there's available instead of just keep flooding. Because that device, we don't know the speed of which it's transferring. Um, in networking, there's a concept called windowing, where they will send as much data as they can, and they'll just overflow the socket, and then they'll send less and less and less and less and less until they find that sweet spot where the socket's happy. That's called windowing. How do I know that? I read a lot of books, but anyways. All right, so um, let's see here. Where was I? Is transferring error? Oh, yeah, set the defaults. All right, and I am going to just copy and paste because I don't want to sit here and waste 10 minutes of your life just typing out variables with the values. So we're going to set the rate, the size, the maximum to zero. We're not transferring. We've transferred zero bytes. The source is zero. The destination is zero. Remember, these are pointers, so we're just zeroing them out. Error is is uh, empty. These We're not scheduled. And the timer, we're setting the interval to five milliseconds. So whew, that's what we're doing there. Check devices. We're going to be calling this. Gosh, you know, there is that burnt cat hair smell again. I better not be like a dead mouse in my computer. See, now I'm kind of wondering. But, but for some reason, these newer computers, the power supply is in the bottom instead of the top. Like the old school towers, it's in the top, but it's in the bottom now. So I wonder if it like sucked up some cat hair in the power supply or something. I don't know. So if there's no source, you know, source isn't available, we're going to stop transferring if we were. Does anybody out there play World of Warcraft? All my friends are playing it. I, uh, I used to play it a long time ago when it came out, like a decade ago. 
but I don't know, I just kind of, whatever, I got out of it. Everybody says it's completely different now. I'm kind of wondering if I should get back into it. Alright, so then we're going to emit the error, and we're just going to return false. Because, remember, this this function is going to take a bool. Or it's going to take a bool. It's going to... Yeah, I'm going to take a bool, honey. No, it's going to return a boolean. Magic of copy and paste. No destination device. So we're going to make sure that thing is there. And then we're going to say... is open. Where's my or? Or not source dot is readable. So we want to make sure the source is open and readable. All right. So we just want to throw that out there. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing for the destination. Make sure that it is open and writable. Destination device is not open or writable. It's kind of funny how your mind wanders, especially when you're trying to type because uh, I made the salt water battery. It's the weirdest thing ever, right? You just take like an ice cube tray and you put like a nail and a copper wire through each little slot in the tray. And it actually was kicking out like, uh, I think it was like almost six volts. I was lighting LEDs off of it. It was just plain old tap water. I was like, whoa. So yeah, if you're interested in that, just uh, either Google or YouTube salt water battery. There's tons of them out there. Um, if you try to make a salt water capacitor, be careful. Those will actually hold enough volts to kill you. So be very careful with that. If you do it, I did not tell you about it. So now we're going to check the transfer. So if we're not transferring, then we want to, and let's just little copy and paste magic here. Not transferring, aborting. So we want to just, you know, a sanity check there to make sure that we're actually transferring something. And then if m transferred is greater than or equal to the rate. Whoops. I wonder how many times I say whoops in a video. I think my girlfriend just got home. I just heard a door where I'm being robbed, one of the two. Usually she can tell when I'm like making a tutorial or something, so she'd probably leave me alone, but you never know. She may come in and start chit-chatting, talking my head off. All right, so now we've got schedule transfer, start, stop, transfer, and read and uh, ready read and bytes written. So let's actually just we do a little copy and paste magic here. Boom. And then we're going to, from the byte written slot and from the ready read slot, we're going to schedule the transfer. Um, now let's jump up to start here. And we're going to go queue debug. see here Q debug so if we're already transferring we just want to say hey we're already transferring whoops already transferring and then we're just gonna exit out of here 
If you wonder why I'm doing all this defensive programming, it's pretty much just because I don't know where this class is going to be consumed. Oops. So I want to make sure that it's pretty much kind of like bulletproof, even though I'm sure it's riddled with bugs. Most code is. So if not, check devices, return. So remember, check devices where we check to make sure they're open and they're readable and writable. And So we're going to say we are transferring. We're going to set that flag to true. I'm transferred. We're going to set to zero. My girlfriend just shut the door on me. So either she's mad at me or she's going to make some noise. So you may hear like the microwave or something in the background. So we're going to emit the started signal. And then we're going to say So if the source is not sequential and the source has bytes, what is it, bytes available is greater than zero, meaning make sure that's actually going to return an int. Yep, in 64. Okay. So if the source is not sequential, in other words, it's like a Q file, and it has bytes available for us to read, then we need to manually kick this thing off. The reason why is Q file is a random access QIO device, so it's not going to emit a ready read signal. So we need to do that manually. Now, if you've noticed, pretty much everything like start and ready read and bytes written is calling the schedule transfer. So that's really going to be the magic here is the schedule transfer function. Um, the reason why we're doing this is we don't want to interrupt a current transfer, and we don't want to just transfer it, you know, lightning speed. So we want to make sure that we know what we're doing and that we can stop at any time. So we need to fill in stop. We're going to stop the timer and we're going to say I'm transferring equal faults. That way we're going to kill the timer and then if we still think we're transferring we're setting that flag to false so we're going to just stop any transfers. So the only things we really have left is the schedule transfer and the actual transfer. So let's take a look at schedule transfer here which of course as I look at my notes is just this little monster that I don't want to deal with. but. I have vowed not to copy and paste as much as I can. So here we go. I think I asked once if you guys like me typing or if you like me copy and pasting, and I think it was a resounding, we like you typing. And I think half the people said they like seeing the mistakes I make when I try to type and talk, and the other half said they like understanding the flow of my thought process and how I'm getting from point A to point B, which I, I understand that. so. All right, if M scheduled, in other words, we're saying if this has already been scheduled, then Q warning. Notice this is a Q warning, not a Q debug. Alright, so if this has already been scheduled, we're going to exit out of here. The reason we're doing this is because ready read and bytes written. If these get emitted and we consume these in our slots, it's going to call schedule transfer. So now we have essentially asynchronous communications going on here. So this can get called two or three times even though we're already waiting on that timer. So if it's already scheduled, we want to say, I know, I know, it's like a teenager, I know mom, I know.
So if we're not transferring, magic and copy and paste here. Then we're going to break out of there and say, okay, stop that stuff. Want to make sure there's bytes available on the source. And then we're going to say, okay. Oops, no, I had that backwards. My bad. If there's no bytes available on the source, I was looking at something that threw me off. In case you're wondering what threw me off, my notes, I've got a, like 20 or 30 lines of Q-debug statements, and it was because I got hung up on something and I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. And I don't want to throw all those Q-debug statements into our little, little video here because it'll take like an hour to type all this junk out. And I could copy and paste it, but I'm just going to end up deleting it anyway. So. so we're going to predict the future here. Int prediction equal m transferred plus m size. Now what this is, is we're going to try and predict what the size is going to be after we send. So we're taking what we've already transferred plus the size of the buffer that we're going to send. And we're going to say if prediction less than or equal to the rate, the rate at which we want to transfer, then we're going to actually send. Maybe. Oh, I see what I did wrong here. All right, so if our prediction is less than or equal to the transfer rate, which is actually our limit, then we're going to go ahead and say, all right, send this. So we're going to transfer that bad boy. Otherwise, whoops. Now we've got a little bit of work here to do. Let's bring that up so we can see what we're doing. Let me save this file. We got a little bit of work. So if our prediction is greater than the rate, we have to, well, delay. We have to say, all right, we don't want to send it now. We want to send it in the future. So how long do we want to wait? So we need to say int current equal q time. Current time, and we want the millisecond of the current time. So we want to see the current time in millisecond, I should say. And it's going to give us a number between 0 and 1,000. So we want to say int delay 1,000 minus current. So what we're doing here is we're creating a delay. So let's say it says 400 milliseconds is the current. Well, then our delay is we take the limit, which is 1,000 milliseconds, minus the, what did we say, 400. So that's going to give us a delay of 600 milliseconds so that we make our one millisecond mark. And then we're going to just, I'm going to just copy and paste that. I'm not going to type all that out. I'm being finicky tonight. I'm crotchety. Boom! Now you know why I wanted to copy and paste that all out. It's just a very large Qdebug statement that says Qdebug this rate limit and then our rate exceeded in prediction m transferred how many we've transferred to the prediction delaying for our delay in milliseconds. So I, you can thank me later. I just saved you about five minutes of watching me type all that out because it wouldn't have been pretty, I can guarantee that. So, <laughs> m transferred. So we want to say that we've currently transferred zero bytes. m scheduled, whoops, equal true. So now we're saying, hey, we've scheduled this. That way if anybody else tries to schedule something, we're going to say, hey, back off, this thing's already scheduled. 
see, uh, if scheduled, then blah, if not transferring, etc., etc. Make sure that's right. Mm, not transferring. Okay, yeah. Then last but surely not least, we're going to say M timer. And when, usually when we work with timers, we use signals and slots. But in this case, we're going to do a single shot. And we're going to say the delay. And we're going to say we want this. And we're going to connect it to the transfer slot. So what's going to happen here is, let's just kind of back out for a second. When we schedule the transfer, it's going to do these checks. Then it's going to, and we should actually probably do another one here, but I'll do it later. Um, I'll explain it later, I should say. Then we're going to try and predict, are we going to exceed the rate? If we are, because that's the limit, we don't want to exceed that even with our buffer size. Um, I'm sorry, if we're not, then we're going to go ahead and transfer it. But if we are going to exceed that, then we want to find out how long we want to delay, you know, update our queue to bug, that way we know something's going on, set the current number of bytes that we've transferred to zero, say we've scheduled the transfer, and then we're going to do a single shot over to the transfer slot. There it is, which I believe is the last little chunk of code i got to fill in here, yeah. So I'm going to give this a good build before we really dive into transfer here. Just a, uh, yeah, voice, voice. Sometimes that's where copy and pasting will bite you in the butt. Actually, no, I typed that. Uh -huh. Great. All right, let's rebuild this thing. Values not declared in the scope. What? Oh, derp. Somebody was probably going, why are you doing that? Whoopsie. Yeah, we got to return true. For check device, or that would be very bad. And gosh, I did it again, didn't I? Whoops. Rate transfer set size. Hmm. Don't know why I blanked out on that one, but we will figure that out. Like I said, running just takes it out of me. I'm just completely brain dead after I run. I don't know why. I don't run very far or very fast. It just, you know, whatever. All right, so we've got an unused parameter, really not a big deal. Um, but we can actually just do a, oh, what is it, Q unused. We're going to call the Q unused macro bytes. That way we get that out of there. Build it again. OK, so now we got no warnings in there. Uh, Q unused is just like a, a no op or a no operation, meaning we're not actually doing anything. We're just consuming that variable into a macro that literally does nothing called Q unused, in case you're wondering what that does. All right, so whew, are you ready? Drum roll, the bread and butter of this class here. We are no longer scheduled. So we're transferring at a maximum of whatever per second. So we're going to check the devices. So if the devices aren't ready, we're going to just return. Whoops. We're going to check if we can transfer. If we cannot, then we're going to just return. And those will emit the error uh, signal so that we can consume that. 
and then we're just going to say, oh, let's see here. Wow, I really screwed that one up somehow. Byte array, we're going to make a buffer here. And we want to read a maximum of whatever we specified, the size. Whoops. And right away, I kind of noticed something that'll definitely trip us up in the future here. We've got size here. We should say. 1024 is the default for the size. Because if you just say zero, it's just going to read zero bytes if you don't set the size, right? So, oh, where was I? You know what? We're going to do things the fast way. Boom. There we go. All right. So here's where I was. And then we're going to write to the destination. Let's actually just do a queue debug. Really don't need these, but just you know, so we have a lot of debug statements whipping around. We can see what's going on. How many bytes we're going to shoot out there? All right, good. And then we're going to say. I'm transferred plus equal buffer dot length and now we want to know if we're finished so we're going to say if maximum is greater than zero and I'm transferred So that way if we've got a maximum in mind, like we know the file size, like let's say we're transferring a file via FTP and we know the transfer file size via the protocol, we can set the maximum so once we hit that maximum number we can close the socket. I'm trying to make this very agnostic so it doesn't really care what the devices are, it just transfers at a specific speed and tries to predict what you're doing. Maximum limit reached. All right, so that's if we have a maximum, which isn't really necessary. And we're going to say if not m source dot is sequential. Whoops. Damn you, mouse cursor. Something screwy is going on here. Man, I'm having just all sorts of trouble. Got a goofy mouse, goofy keyboard, and my computer smells like burnt cat hair. M source. Whoops. So what we're saying here is if the source is sequential, like it's a socket, and there's no bytes available, there's just nothing on that socket none. We're going to say qdebug this so if it's like a Q file and there's no more bytes then we're just done And we're going to stop. And I think we're almost done with this class, actually. Whoops, what did I do there? 
All right, so. Wow, what do I do? What do I keep doing there? Oh, I see what I'm doing. I keep hitting my little finger on the arrow key. My bad. Like I said, long day. So if we're if we're still transferring, we're just going to return because we're just done with this. And then we're going to say, let's copy this. So if we're uh, if we're not transferring, we're going to you know, drop out of here. Otherwise, we're going to say same thing. Is it sequential? And are there bytes available? Then, then we want to schedule the transfer. Because remember, when it is a uh, random access, like a Q file, it's not going to emit that ready read. So we've got to take care of this ourselves. All right, so let's give this a good build. Wow, no errors. That kind of scares me a little bit. I'm used to like 8 million, trillion, jillion errors. Let's actually give it a rebuild just because I'm always paranoid. And so this is the file that we're going to be, whoops, it done, yeah. Couple unused, but no errors. Wow. So, this is the file we're going to transfer here. So, we're going to copy this bad boy. And we're going to actually. Where do I want to do this? Let's actually do it in here in this dialog. We're going to include the rate transfer, right? Actually, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. So we're just going to make a test class here, and then in here we're just going to say do test. All right, good, good. We're going to include the rate transfer, and we're going to include the Q file. So what we're going to do is back up because I screwed that up. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Let's make these privates. Q file. M source. Q file. Destination. Rate transfer, transfer. Alrighty, so we've got our variables here. We've got a source, a destination, and a transfer. So let's just copy these. Set file name, and we're just going to. We're going to transfer from A to B. We're going to set the source. And 
destination. We're going to say M transfer set rate. So how big is this file? Because I want to actually slow this down here. This bad boy is 13k. So I was originally going to put it at 15k, but we transferred all in one shot. So let's actually do uh, 2k a second as a maximum. Set size. We're going to set the size to why not 500 bytes. Actually, let's do 250, just because I want to. And our rate transfer has some signal slots here that we're going to we'll probably want to consume here. So let's do this. Let's copy those. Eh, eh, I'm getting it. I've only made like what? 136 of these videos and I'm just now figuring this out. Alright, so we've got to connect these up now. Alright, so start started and we're just going to really speed this process here up Let me close that so we can see what's going on here Basically, um, this is a very loose form of unit testing, what we're doing here. I didn't want to muck up our, our dialogue, so I think we actually forgot the admit signal for this, but we will find out. Notice how we're closing the source and the destination file. Some operating systems, if you're writing to the file, it won't actually flush the bytes down until you close it. So notice that. Whoops. All right, we want to capture any errors here. So we need to Ah, if we're going to do it, let's do it the correct way. Now open the source. I almost wrote the word destiny. I'm still mad about that game. I got uh, a game called Destiny for... I think it was Christmas and I've never been able to play it because it just won't patch, it won't load, it's on Xbox. Everybody else's is working fine, mine not so much. So start. Alright, so let's look at this real quick. Let's make sure start actually starts before I do this. 
da 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 check file, okay, sequential, schedule transfer, okay, good. So we're going to call up our test class, and then we're going to call do test, which is going to do all this wonderful stuff. It's going to open the source, open the destination, it's going to configure the transfer, and with any luck, we're going to transfer from A to B. And if I open this bad boy up, it's just a copy of, well, this program. Let's say... Why did I do that? I did not want to do that. I said I didn't want to do it, then I did it anyways. Well, blah. There we go. So we're just going to do the test here. And just for giggles, we're going to save and let's run and see what happens. And no matching function call. Rate and fans for test. What? Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now you can see that it is sitting there reading and writing away. And then once it's gone, was very uneventful because we we're going kind of slow, but you can see the read writes here. Created, setting the defaults, opening the file, sending, 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 and you can see how rate limit exceeded in prediction. 2000 was our max, uh, to 2250 is what it would have been, so we're going to delay for 467 milliseconds. Yep, another one, blah, blah, blah. We're going to delay for 99, 999 milliseconds, so almost an entire second of delay. Same there, same there. We're going to delay for a whole second there. Almost there. So that, in a nutshell, is it. And we, yep, we have B, and it opens up beautifully. So we've sent all the data. Whew. Another long tutorial. I hope you're not like Grumpy Cat here and you actually enjoyed this. Um, the source code for this and other tutorials will be out on my website, voidrealms.com, under tutorials. Uh, language is cute. And way, way, way back at the very end is where it'll be. And the next tutorial, we're actually going to take this rate transfer class that we made and wire it into our HTTP server so that we can send files in a throttled manner.